Hi, I'm Bo Keister from Hillbilly Horror Show, and you're howling with the 13th Wolfman. Hey everyone, I'm the 13th Wolfman, and you know what? I have Bo Keister with me today. You might know him from stuff like Remember the Titans. He's got a new one out called The Cabinine. And he's even put out another edition of the Hillbilly Horror Show. Welcome to sit down, Bo. Wolfie, thank you so much, man. Glad to be here. Oh Yeah, we're just having a good time talking. Uh, we're talking about the fact that, you know, you were in Remember the Titans, and you were just saying that you actually played against T.C. Williams, not not the team from Remember the I mean, not that specific team, but that specific high school. Yeah, yeah, um, yep. Yeah. God, that was more years ago than I care to remember. I mean, you know, it's like yeah. where's my false teeth and my walker? But, but yeah, um, I mean, it's just amazing. There's so many ties in my life to that film. I mean, my dad was a high school football coach, and when he was an assistant uh, at Virginia Beach High School many, many moons ago, um, he actually coached against uh, Herman Boone and one of his teams prior to the T.C. Williams merger. So when I actually got the audition for Remember the Titans, my dad knew the whole story, all the backstory behind it. He was like, oh, well, you know, this happened and this and then this. And, you know, I went into that audition so wired, man. I mean, I, I remember Mark Van Cannon. I was like, you know, I told him, I said, I've got to have a role in this film, Mark. I've got to have a role in this film. And he was like, well, do you want to audition for it first? I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. I've got to be in this film. <laughs> so... Uh, and sure enough, um, I, I, I read for one of the roles, and my agent called me a few days later and said, uh, you're being considered for three different parts. We just don't know which one yet. And uh, a couple of days later, I booked one of the more pivotal characters in the film. Uh, Kyle even Taylor. Though it's, yeah, uh, you know, it's just, I mean, it's such a small role. I mean, I, I guess if you totaled it up, I'm on screen for maybe all of 15 seconds, but the fact that you know my character takes rev out which puts sunshine you know in that leadership role i mean that's a really pivotal moment in the film and everybody always remembers that part of the film they and and you know they i constantly get bombarded with people you know coming up to me going songs over sambo <laughs> which is <laughs> one of my like handful of lines from the film so but you know what? I, I love the fact that people love the movie and, uh, you know, just proud to be part of it. Yeah, what's not to love? I mean, I, I'm i a huge lover of horror, but when it comes down to, like, sports movies, I love the football movies, like We Are Marshall and Remember, remember, the, remember the Titans is just one of those ones that it just resonates so well that you could take just about any lesson you want from that movie. Yep. And it's got such a great cast. We were talking about a Will Patton, Denzel Washington, Hayden Pantier, yourself, Ryan Hurst, Kip Pardue. Just keeps yep. going, man. That the, the yeah, cast Ryan, like Ryan Gosling, uh, uh, Donald Faison. I mean, yeah, it's just. Uh, I mean, it's a who's who at this point. Yeah, I, it, it, anyone could say I got probably one of my better starts from Remember the Titans. <laughs> yeah. You know. De definitely a leg up in the film world, that's for sure. Well, it, it's one of those movies where you look at it and you go, why was there no nominations? I mean, I, I know because the Oscars are rigged nowadays, but... Yeah. You know, but I, the, thought it, I thought, honestly, I thought, uh, I thought both Denzel Washington and Will Patton both uh, should have at least garnered nominations. I mean, that, that speech, you know you know, make sure they remember forever the night they were, they played the Titans that Will Patton gives. I, I have seen that movie. I, I don't know how many gazillion times because my two sons now are old enough to kind of understand what daddy does for a living. And anytime that film is on, they want to watch it and they love the movie. And, but as many times as I've seen that film, you think you'd kind of get numbed off to it, but every time that scene comes up, I mean, every hair, you know, goosebumps <laughs> all over. 
you know, it's just uh, rarely do you have any kind of characters like that that continually resonate with you the way that does. And it seems like it's only only re- I mean, sports movies. It seems like are the ones that really do it for me. Rudy is another one. Oh yeah, Rudy's big time. I can sit, I can turn Rudy on any you know it could be anywhere in the movie it's like Pulp Fiction anywhere in the movie I turn it on I just I watch the rest of it I don't care <laughs> I, it's it could be the last that he's just getting ready to sack the person at the very end of the movie I'm gonna sit there and watch it because it's Rudy <laughs> yeah. and remember that, the Titans hey, is I the same love way. that movie yeah yeah Rudy we are Marshall remember the Titans I mean all day every day you know I mean they're right up there with the Rocky movies for me. Yeah, my heart breaks every time that uh, Ryan. We find out Ryan Hurst's character Gary Bertrand is paralyzed. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, you know it's coming, and you still you're like, oh, exactly. It, it's like, oh my god, how many times? How many times are they going to break my heart? <laughs> <laughs> can we do the one? Can we do the one where where you know he walks onto the field? Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let Let's do that one. I'll uh, <laughs> tell you what. Let, let's uh let's get Jerry Bruckheimer on the line and and get him to do some rewrites and we'll do we'll do Remember the Titans you know reboot. <laughs> the Remember the Titans twenty year reunion, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Revenge of the Titans. <laughs> Revenge of the Titans. Yes, I like that. I like that. We can kind of make it a football slasher type thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Works for me. You know. <laughs> Fouls on the play are serious fouls on the play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It breaks through the line, you know, gets into the secondary, and the safety whips out a machete. It's it's go. perfect. I mean, we're on to something here, guys. Yeah, there you go. The, 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 new, the next cabining movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Bruce and Todd. Bruce and Todd, you know, we take over as the coaches. At TC, you know, but uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we brought in our I, running backs coach, Gary Bertier. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think that's a great idea. I love it. I love it. Well, we've got to get to work on a script. Well, let's talk. About, I mean, we've been talking about the cavity for two weeks now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I man, I hate that I missed that first run, but uh, God, I, I'm I, I have not been that sick in years. I just oh, worst worst stomach bug of my life. It's it's not a problem. You're here now, and you know we we could talk there about we go. it. There go. You know, so well, I, I we kind of know how you got the job with with um with the cabinet. You know, you auditioned for it and whatnot, but uh. What's your? I want to hear your take on the whole thing because I've heard Steve, I heard Mike. You know. Oh, uh, you mean my take on the film and how it turned out, or on on, on the uh, on how you got your part and the. You know, well, the... yeah, I mean it was really crazy because um, Mike reached out to me, um, and you know was looking for somebody to kind of come on and a bit of an executive producer capacity. Uh, Because I had done some stuff like that uh, before with past projects, and he had found me through IMDb and reached out to me, and he said, you know, there's a couple of cop roles in there, so I'll send you the script, take a look at it, see what you think. He's like, you know, if you like either of the cop roles, you know, they're, you know, it's kind of on the table. So I thought, well, you know, hey, I'll take a look at it. But I keep, I start reading through the script, and Bruce just jumped off the page to me. I mean, there, there was definitely a part of myself that I saw in him. Um, because anyone who knows me will tell you that I got a party animal streak in me a mile wide. Um, I always have. Uh, you know, I'm just kind of. That's where I live and breathe, and, and, you know, I don't care if we're tailgating at a football game or hanging out at a frat house. I mean, <laughs> you know, if there's going to be someone in that mix that's, you know, loud and over the top and wired for sound, it's going to be me. And, um, you know, I just felt like I could bring a lot to that. So I called Mike up, and I said, who's playing Bruce? And he said, well, nobody right now. And I said, I want to crack at it. And he said, put something on tape. 
And I did, and he sent it to Steve, and I got a call a few minutes later saying, hey, Steve wants to Skype with you, and, uh, you know, we did that, and 10 minutes later, I got the call that it was mine, and when we got on set, I just remember we were doing a script reading and everything, and I was kind of holding back and just, you know, just going through the lines, because I don't like to go... I don't like to really lock into a character or what I'm going to do with a character until right before. I like to kind of let that character live and breathe in the moment. Um, and I do a lot of improv stuff. So sometimes I don't know what in the hell is going to come out of my mouth. I just let things fly. And, you know, I mean, Steve told me, he said, I trust you. Just do what you do. If I don't like it, I'll tell you. And I said, fine by me. Um, Rarely was it the case that, you know, he didn't like what I did. But, I mean, the fact that he gave me so much freedom as an actor to just create and let Bruce be what I wanted him to be and, you know, that was the most fun I think I have ever had on a film set in my career. And, I mean, I've gotten to do a lot of stuff, uh, but... That was just where I felt like I could really turn it loose and go wide open with, uh, with it and, and just let it go, you know, fly with it. And, and if it didn't work, it didn't work. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, we'd be on set and I'd, I'd try something and I'd be like, nah, I don't like that. Let's do it again. And, you know, Steve and, and our, our DP, Jeff Schultz, I mean, they they were more than accommodating to, to let us as a cast, uh, you know, kind of bring things to life. And it took a couple days for everybody to get in sync and get in rhythm with each other. But boy, when we jailed as a cast, I mean, you can tell it just, it kind of took on a life of its own. And every day on set was, it was just, you know, it was like play day. It yeah. <laughs> just, you know, it was like no, being, it, it was like, it's like being at a daycare center or something, you know, we're just kids and we're playing with everything we can get our hands on. <laughs> Especially Melissa. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, there's a lot of people that hate me for that opening scene in the film where she's laying in my lap and I just, you know, I don't, you know, sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I wouldn't be. I'm not, I'm not sorry one little bit. <laughs> I, no, I, I love Melissa. She's so much fun. Yeah, she. Yeah, you could tell that you guys had a great uh, camaraderie, camaraderie with one another. You know. Um, yeah, the, I mean the whole cast. I mean, uh, you know, uh, everybody from from me and Mike. Um, I mean, Mike just plays Todd so perfectly. I mean, just plays him so straight and so downtrodden, and just you know, he just keeps taking his lumps. And Bruce just keeps heaping them on. And, um, <laughs> but I mean, you know, just, I mean, Mike, Angela, Melissa, I mean, Luce, Chuck, uh, you know, everybody, every, Mark Rademacher, I mean, everybody played, had their characters down. And, and I think Mark's performance is one of the more underrated performances of the thing. I mean, he oh. plays Monroe with just such flair and panache. Uh, yeah, it's no, I, just I mean, he's funny as hell to watch. Everybody in this movie, there's not a bad, there's there's not a, a bad character, or bad character development, or acting in anywhere in this movie. Everyone is on point. I I, I get it. I I just I wa I watched this movie and I loved it from the beginning to the end. There wasn't, like I said before, and I said in the last two shows, the cover was the only thing that bothered me, but that's that's neither here nor there. It has nothing to do with the movie. You know? The movie was great. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of the cover art, uh, but uh you know that was the you know, distribution companies yep. the, the, if they're selling your film, they're gonna sell it the way they want to sell it. And if that's what they think works, then that's their thing. Um I, I mean I think the original art that was done for it uh, you know, using the actual, you know, house that we, we shot for the retreat and everything uh, is still this day that I, I love that art. I think it's so cool. That place was beautiful. Oh, it was that. amazing. And it, what a lot of people don't know is like Mike Wilk and um, Elise Shapiro were basically our team that took this empty 
five or six, I think it was like a 5,000 square foot place or something like that. And they went and made deals with consignment shops and all kinds of stuff to furnish it and make it look like Shangri-La. Without them, the location doesn't work. It That's does true. not yeah. work. Uh, and and they're, they were brilliant in putting that together. They were absolutely brilliant putting that together. It was it was a beautiful place. I mean, like the movie shot beautifully. The acting is all, like I said on point through the whole film. It's got its high it's got its high points with the laughter and it's got its dark points with the with the horror and it works. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, I think so. Um, there, I mean, you know, I mean, it turns out it turned out to be a whole lot more of a comedy than anything else, but. You know, everybody just everybody did their job so well. I mean, and and you know, you talk about the look of the film. I mean, that is um, that is all about Jeff Schultz. Um, I mean, he really the man knows what he's doing, and he he can he can make that camera hum, baby. I mean, it's it's just he he really it, whatever Steve wanted to see, Jeff would make it. He would not only capture what Steve wanted, but he would make it look a hundred times better than anybody thought it would look. He, he he's good at what he does. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Let's let's try to make. I mean, it, it basically was a, a comedy with horror elements thrown into it. But if we if they tried to just make a straight horror film with Bruce as a character, <laughs> it doesn't work. No, no. You know, I mean. Bruce, you have to have that dynamic between Bruce and Todd. That's where the humor really works. Um, and I, I mean, I think with Mike and I having, you know, such a great relationship, you know, both on and off camera, uh, I mean, we both really got where we wanted, you know, the we got each other... Uh, as people, and, and we both understood what we wanted to do with the characters. There, the what a lot of people don't know is the scenes of us driving in the van to Shangri La was never scripted. That is all one hundred and ten percent improv, start to finish. The 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 house that the cast was uh, staying in. Mike shows up one afternoon, and says, "Hey, you want to go film some shit?" And I said, "Sure, let's go." So. You know, I get into wardrobe. We jump in the van with uh, with Jeff Schultz and and Sam Sage, and you know, Sam lights the van as as best he can, and Jeff sets up the camera and just says, "Okay, so start talking about this. Go." And <laughs> for two, I mean, it was like an hour and a half, two hours. We just rode around, uh, you know, the back roads near Boyne City, Michigan, improv. And uh, if I remember right, it it ended up with Bruce saying something about a chick and butt sex, and uh, Jeff just turned the camera off and told me I was going to hell. So, <laughs> and then we got to uh, we got down to location, and Steve was mad as hell because we were about thirty minutes late getting to set, and uh, we just told him, "Don't worry, you're gonna love us when you see what we've done." So. So, uh, okay, we, we get to talk about the cabinet. We'll, we'll also talk about that on the live show. How about you tell us a little bit about your Hillbilly Horror Show? Man, I'll tell you what. Hillbilly Horror Show has just, it's been amazing um, what we've accomplished. Uh, this, was a, this was an idea uh, that my business partner, Blue DeGoye, who I worked on, uh, I worked on his film, House of Good and Evil. That's how we met. And... He hits me up about this time two years ago and says, I've got an idea for a series and pitches me this idea that is basically Tales from the Crypt meets Hee Haw. <laughs> and I love that idea. <laughs> he, you know, he was like, you know, we know all these independent, you know, filmmakers that do all these cool horror shorts, but nobody sees them outside of the film festival circuit. And there's some really great ones out there. So why not, you know, kind of build a show around them? And we put this, we put it together. And in February of 2014, we, you know, 
kicked off our first two volumes, uh, filming those. Uh, we film up in Maryland. And it is really just kind of taken on a life of its own. And it, it continues to grow. And uh, today we just uh, came out on iTunes and Voodoo. So, you know, I mean, iTunes, it doesn't, with the exception of maybe Netflix, there is no bigger platform. Uh, you know, but That's we're on, we're on uh, Google Play, we're on Amazon Prime, and, um, you know, now we're already in the works to film uh, volumes five and six. And, and, you know, it really is starting to find its audience and, and get its legs underneath it. And the fact that we have taken this from what was nothing more than a phone call of him pitching an idea to me two years ago to four volumes in the can, completed, and now launched worldwide through some of the biggest streaming platforms there are, uh, is just, you know, amazing to us that we've come so far so quickly. Um, you know, albeit with a lot of growing pains, like with any series, but, you know, now uh, we're looking at a lot of different, uh, there's still several transactional video on demand systems and platforms that we're going to get on. Uh, I'm in the process of developing our own Roku app uh, that people will be able to access, um, you know, and you it's just rolling. Do you guys have your own website to, where people can go to and check things out? Absolutely, yeah, hillbillyhorrorshow.com. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, they can still go on there and, you know, uh, sign up for our newsletter. We do all kinds of giveaways and, and just, you know, fun, cool stuff. And, and all the platforms are there. They can just click on them and go straight to the platform of their choice and watch the show and see what we're all about. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's getting rave reviews from people. Uh, they, they're loving the show. Um, well, and, you know, and also we're helping we're helping other filmmakers and that's a huge thing in this business that is, is filmmakers ha helping filmmakers getting exposure I mean uh, you know Patrick Ray is one of the directors of, you know two of his films have made it in different volumes um, and he's highly regarded within the horror world uh, you know uh, Jason Tostevin uh, one of his films is uh, in volume four called Till Death which I think is hands down one of the most funny horror comedy shorts I've ever seen in my life. I, I, I've seen it a, a gazillion times at this point, and I still crack up every time I watch that film. <laughs> well, we're going to put the, well, I'm going to put the, the, the hillbillyhorror.com in the, in the notes below, so when people watch this, they can click on that, they can go check it out, they can check out all the different platforms, you know. Yep. Uh, yeah, and, hillbillyhorrorshow.com, and, um, yeah, and also, you know, I mean, we're some of the other um, Roku apps. I mean, Indie Flicks and some of those. We're on all of that now too. Cool. Well, we'll talk about it. <laughs> I say, send me an email with all this, with all the links, and I'll throw all, all those links. You know. Cool. Yeah, uh, and then people can always, you know, they can always find us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we're on Twitter at Hillbill Horror and, uh, and Hillbilly Horror Show on Facebook. Uh, we've got a nice little fan following. And, I mean, it, you know, it's a fun show to do. I mean, God, I mean, all we do is sit around and drink beer and crack up. <laughs> How bad can it possibly be? <laughs> so the budget is a, is a case? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, I mean, our budget is pretty much a, a case of beer and a roll of duct tape. Um, and that's that's how we've held the show together through four volumes, and I don't see that changing. But, you know, now that we're on the bigger platforms, we're really hoping that we'll start to find that broader audience, um, you know, people who come from that generation that remember Tales from the Crypt, that remember Creep Show. And, you know, I grew up on that. I mean, you know, I never thought in a million years I'd be turning around and hosting a series like that but it just fits I, I know exactly how you feel i mean there's no way you could have told me five years ago that i'd be having a show on youtube where i get to talk to people from horror movies where horror movies are my favorite thing yeah and i i have had that i've had the the luck of talking to you know like gabrielle stone and elise crocker from the door and christy ray from pieces of town all these different people and yep. bo keister from the cabinet and 
you know, so it's it's completely mind blowing when it hits you. You know. Oh, I, it's it is. I mean, it's so much fun. You know, I I can still remember. You know, me and my friends. I mean, I grew up in a a, a cool little neighborhood, and and all of my buddies. Uh, you know, there were four of us, and we were all. You know, we were together all the time. I mean, you know, morning, noon, and night. And, you know, when we get together and, like, crash at somebody's house, we get somebody's older brother or whatever to drive us to the video store, and we rent, like, ten horror films and just sit in there. You know, I mean, we're all in there 12, 13, 14 years old getting jacked out of our skulls on Jolt Cola (laughs) <laughs> and eating, you know, mountains of junk food. And, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, sitting there wired till 5 o'clock in the morning watching horror films. I mean, you know, everything from Demon Night to Night of the Creeps to Return of the Living Dead. And, I mean, you know, we couldn't get enough of them. I mean, oh, I know. you know, did, we didn't care if we'd seen the movie 10 times. We'd sit and watch it again. And, you know, if we weren't doing that, we were watching Headbangers Ball. So... You know, it, it just, uh, you know, to, to to have all those cool childhood memories that revolved around horror films, and, and now I make them. It's It doesn't get any better than that. No. Bo, man, I, I want to thank you for coming on. we got to get ready for the live show. Uh, oh, yeah. So, so um, people looking for you, where can they find you on uh, social media? Yeah, man, just look me up at Bo Keister on Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash Bo Keister, or on Twitter at Bo Keister, and Instagram, B-K-N, the Berg, B-U-R-G. And hillbillyhorrorshow.com. Yes, absolutely. Check us out there, too. All righty. For that, I'm the 13th Wolfman, and I'm on the prowl. <laughs>